Welcome to Bible class. It's so exciting to see each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining in for another edition of our Bible class. We have loved doing these with you all and for you all. We've had so much fun teaching you guys and learning with you all, and we're excited to get started with another Bible class. Now, before we go any further, you know that you need your Bible. Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't have your Bible, hit pause. When you go get it, hit play when you're ready. All right, now that we're officially ready to start Bible time, we have our Bibles. We need to do what? We need to stop and we need to pray, okay? Remember, if you have any prayer requests, please make them known. We'll pray with you and pray for you. But it's important to stop in our days and make sure that we're praying to God. Let's bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have blessed us with. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to have this Bible class. Father, we thank you for giving us the Bible, Father, that we can learn and study and know more about you. Father, we pray that we're taking opportunities every single day to read more and to learn more, to study more. Father, that we can apply those things and be better doers. Father, we know it's not enough just to be listeners, but we must also be doers. Father, we pray that you'd be with us as we go into this Bible class time. Father, that we'd be good listeners. Father, that we'd pay attention and Father, we can take something away from these Bible classes. Father, we thank you so much for all of our many blessings, for our homes, for our parents, <clears throat> Father, for the food that we have to eat, for the clothes that we have to wear, Father, for our brothers and sisters, and Father, we pray that we recognize those as blessings from you. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you so much for Christ Jesus. So in his name I pray, amen. Alrighty, guys, well, we have our Bibles, and we have prayed. Now it's time to what? It's time to sing, and you guys know that singing and Bible time are both my favorites, so I'm super excited for both. But we're going to get started with one of my favorites, then we'll jump into my second favorite, and that's studying the Bible with you guys, okay? Are you guys ready to sing? Let's sing together. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let you know a little secret. At the end of class, we're going to learn how to sign Jesus Loves Me. So from now on, we can sing it and sign it at the beginning of class. All right? So you're going to know how to sing it normal. You're going to know how to sing it without the me. You're going to know how to sing it in Spanish. And you're going to know how to sign it. So we're going to be able to sing that song four different ways. And it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited for Miss Renee to teach us how. But before we go any further, let's sing it in Spanish. All right? You ready? Here we go. Cristo me ama, bien lo sé, su palabra me hace ver, que los niños son de aquel, quien es nuestro amigo fiel. Si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, la Biblia dice así. Good job. Alright guys, let's sing the next song. The next song is going to be about the joy in our hearts. And we know that what? Jesus is our constant. Jesus is our source of joy. And therefore our joy can be constant. Alright, let's sing about it. Yo tengo gazo, 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 gazo en mi corazón. Donde en mi corazón. Donde en mi corazón. Yo tengo gazo, 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 gazo en mi corazón. Porque Cristo me salvó. Good job. I love that song. I love the songs that we've already sang. They're so simple, but they have so much power and meaning when we really think about it and how much God loves us and how much Jesus loves us. All right, let's sing the Apostles song. You ready? I say, are you ready? What I really mean is, am I ready? All right, you ready? Here we go. Jesus called them one by one. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Next came Philip, Thomas, too. Matthew and Bartholomew. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. He called them one by one. James, the one they called the less. Simon, also Thaddeus. Twelfth apostle Judas made, Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, 
He called them one by one. Matthias then took Jesus' place to preach to men of every race. Paul three preaching trips did make and went to Rome for Jesus' sake. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. He called them one by one. We did it! We got through the whole song, and I think we did it just exactly the way it's supposed to be singing. We did it. We did it. Finally, we did it. So good job, guys. You guys have probably been singing it right the entire time. We've been struggling just a little bit. You guys are doing great there. All right? Let's sing. We're going to sing a song that has a lot to do with today's lesson. It's going to be Seek Ye First, right? So... We'll sing this song and then we'll talk about it. The only difference with this song that we normally do, we're not going to break off and do the echoes. We're just going to sing it straight through, okay? So we'll do the Seek You verse, uh, Seek you First verse, and then we'll do ask and, ask and it will be given unto you, and then man shall not live on bread alone. So those three verses, and we won't split to do the echoes, all right? Here we go. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Shall be added unto you, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and ye shall find. I knock and the door shall be opened unto you, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Good job. I love that song. It is one of my favorite songs. I lead that song every opportunity I get, and we'll talk more about that song a little bit later in our lesson, all right? The next song also has a lot to do with what we're talking about today, and we're going to sing about be careful little mouse, what you say, be careful little hands, what you do, be careful little minds, what you think, and be careful little hearts, who you trust, all right? So be four different verses, and we'll do it in that order, all right? Mouth, hands, minds, heart, okay? You ready? Here we go. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little hands, what you do. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little minds, what you think. Be careful, little minds, what you think. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little minds, what you think. Be careful, little heart, who you trust. Be careful, little hearts, who you trust. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little hearts, who you trust. I love that song. Again, such a simple little song, but so much power and meaning when you really think about it. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more in our Bible class, okay? So we'll save it for later. All right, the last song we're going to sing this morning is the hippo song, all right? So we'll do it normal like we always do, and then we'll do it real fast, all right? Here we go. Arms up, you gotta get ready. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. At the top, He placed the sky. Fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much He cared. In the middle, He had some fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Are you ready to do it faster? Are you? Are you ready for this? All right. As long as you're ready. Let's do it really, really fast. You ready? Here we go. Arms up. Deep breath. 
He made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. At the top, he placed his scout. Fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much he cared. In the middle, he had some fun. He made the hills and the waves and the mountains and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the sea. He made the sea and the waves and the All right, let's get started with Bible time. So, we are going to pick up again in the Old Testament where we've been in the book of Exodus. And if you'd like to, you can go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 19. We're going to start a little bit in Exodus chapter 19, and then we'll go to Exodus chapter 20. So, to try to do a big review really quick, I'm going to do a review with you guys, all right? So, do you remember from Exodus chapter 16? Exodus chapter 16 came from the last class. Now, remember... We started off with Moses, all right? We've been, we've been studying the Mo uh, Moses and the Israelites in Egypt, all right? So we've gone through how many plagues? We went through 10 plagues, all right? So after 10 plagues, they leave Egypt, all right? So now we're following them on this journey through the wilderness, all right? So, so far we've seen a lot of different things happen, all right? A lot of times what happens? The Israelites get worried. They cry out and say, did you just bring us here to die, right? And Moses always says what? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We need to be like Moses. We need to tell people, trust in the Lord, and we ourselves need to trust in the Lord, okay? So we look at um, Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16 is when what? We find them, they're hungry, all right? They're hungry. If you Really, if you look at the beginning or the end of Exodus chapter 15, they are allowed to have water to drink. Remember, uh, God commands Moses to throw a what? A log in the water, all right? And it makes the water sweet, all right? So now they have water to drink. And then in Exodus chapter 16, they have two things. The Lord provides two different things to eat. Number one was a meat source, which was... Good if you said quail, all right? And number two was a bread source, and they called this bread what? What did they call the bread? They called it manna. Good. All right, so that's a quick review from chapter 16, all right? If you don't remember some of these things, go back and read, all right? I love having class and then going back and reading, or reading before class, so I really am ready for class, all right? So it's always good to go back and review so you can remember these things. We're going to skip chapter 17. So go back and read chapter 17 on your own, all right? Go back and read chapter 17. Chapter 18, we see that um, Moses receives advice from Jethro. Now, who is Jethro? Does anyone remember who Jethro is? Jethro is Moses' father-in-law, okay? So it's the father of his wife. So in chapter 18, we see that Moses is reunited with his family, and Jethro gives him advice. Now, What's happening in, in Exodus chapter 18 is that Moses is serving as a judge, okay? Anytime there's any type of quarrels or arguments or disagreements among the Israelites, they come to Moses and he basically settles these. He sides with one person, decides who's in the right, and he settles these quarrels, okay? So it's basically if you've ever had an argument with your brother or sister and you go to your mom and dad and say, this is what happened, who's right? That's what's happening. They're coming to Moses, and it's taking a lot of time. And Jethro gives him the advice of what? You need to find honorable men, men who are wise, men who specifically, he says, won't take a bribe or hate a bribe, and allow them to help you, okay? And if it's an easy manner, they can settle this, this dispute. But if it's difficult, they can bring it to you. So Jethro offers that advice to Moses. So what we have going on here is that you have a group of people who have spent over 400 years in uh, Egyptian captivity. So basically their rules were given to them by the Egyptians. Okay. So what they did on a day-to-day -day basis were given to them by the Egyptians. Now of course they were following the, the will of God but the majority of their rules were coming from the Egyptians. So day to day, they, they lived by what the Egyptians told them to do. So now you have them wandering through the wilderness. Now these disagreements, okay? These arguments, all right? They're popping up everywhere. So we're going to pick up in chapter 19. We know that Israel is at the base of Mount Sinai, okay? So what we're about to be introduced to is in chapter 20 is the Ten Commandments. But let's read first and something very important in chapter 19, all right? 
on ch in chapter 19, starting in verse 1, it says, On the third new moon after the people of Israel had gone out to the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out of Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, Tell all the people of Israel, You yourselves have been what I did, excuse me, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that they shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. Okay, so here we have in chapter 19 the introduction, all right, that God is going to establish a covenant, or right, going to establish an agreement, a set of laws or a set of rules that the Israelites must obey. And we see in chapter 19 the Israelites what? They say that they agree, all right? It says in verse 7, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, okay? So the Lord speaks to Moses. Moses, as he always has been from the very beginning that we were introduced to him after uh, he flees Egypt, all right, when he's ready to go back to Egypt, since the Lord has spoken to him, he has been a what? He has been a messenger. He's either been a messenger to Pharaoh and the Egyptians or a messenger to the Israelites. And here we see Moses being a messenger yet again. The Lord tells Moses, tell the people that if they will listen to me, all right, if they will follow me, all right, it says, if they will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all people, for all the earth is mine. All right? So the Lord tells them that, and the Israelites do what? They agree. They agree to keep all that the Lord has commanded. Okay? So then we'll pick up in chapter 20. Before we jump into chapter 20, let's talk about a few things. Okay? First of all, how many of you have rules within your household? Yeah? You have rules, you have certain things that you can do, and you have certain things that you cannot do, okay? When you guys go back to school, how many of you are going to have rules in your classroom and in your school, right? Every single one of you. How many of you, if you play sports, are you going to have rules in the sports? Yeah, we all have rules, right? The majority of things that we do, we have rules or we have laws, okay? If you get in a car with your parents and you go out and you get on the road, there are laws, okay? The laws of the, of the road, right? First and foremost is we have to buckle that seatbelt, okay? So most things have rules and most things have laws. But let's ask a better question. How many of you like all of those rules? Oh, maybe not everyone's hand shot up, right? When I ask if there were rules, everyone's hand shot up like, yes, there are rules. But then I ask if everyone liked the rules, maybe not as many hands with that, okay? And the fact of the matter is, we don't always like the rules that we have, okay? But that's okay. We don't have to like the rules, but it's important for us to understand why we have those rules, okay? The rules that we have, for example, the rules of the road, Okay? The laws that we must follow when we're going down the road, they keep us safe and they keep other people safe. Okay? They're not for us to like necessarily, they're for us to obey so that it, when we get home or when we're getting to our destination, hopefully we can arrive safely. Rules are set out to keep us safe. Okay? So we're talking about the classroom, we're talking about the road, we're talking about sports teams. Those are generally to keep us safe physically and to make sure that everything is fair. Okay? Most of the rules in sports are to make sure that everyone play, plays a fair game. So when we're going to read about the rules that, that God establishes with the Israelites and later we'll look into the New Testament and some of the commandments He's given us, those are to keep us safe spiritually. Okay? So we think about the rules of the road the rules of playing games, the rules at the house, right? For example, some of you probably aren't allowed to use the stove, all right? You're not allowed to use the stove unless mom and dad are there to help you and to guide you, all right? Why is that? Well, the stove gets really hot and it could burn you or 
even it could cause a fire if we're not careful, okay? So we don't want you to get physically burned, okay? So the reason that God gives rules to people is so that He can keep them safe spiritually, so they can remain righteous, so they can remain His children and follow and obey and love Him. Another th thing that I want to talk about with rules is something that is called an umbrella term, an umbrella rule. Okay, and some of you may be thinking, what are you talking about? Well, let me explain. So if you ever use an umbrella, I'm not going to use one. I don't have one inside with me, all right? But if you pop up an umbrella, you know that it what, does what? It covers a larger area. Now, you may even have an umbrella outside on a picnic table, and those umbrellas are even bigger, and they cover an even bigger space, all right? So when rain falls, all right, it doesn't touch anything that's underneath the umbrella, all right, there and lots of things can fall under the umbrella or, or get underneath the umbrella. For example, Mr. Nay and Miss Riley are here today. If I popped an umbrella and if it was big enough, they could get underneath it with me and stay dry as well. So when I say that there could be an umbrella term or an umbrella rule, let me give you an example. Okay, an example of that is to treat everyone the way you want to be treated. We find that in the New Testament. It's now been called the golden rule. All right, treat everyone the way you want to be treated. All right? That is an umbrella commandment. All right? Now, does that commandment say, specifically say, do not hit your brother or your sister? No, it doesn't say that, but it doesn't have to say that because it says treat everyone the way that you want to be treated, and I don't want to be hit, and you don't want to be hit, so therefore it we don't hit each other, right? So we can't look for loopholes within rules, right? When we see rules or commandments, especially from God, God gives us a commandment and He expects us to follow it. He doesn't expect us to find a way in which we can break it or get away with it, right? So some of the things that we're going to look at may be considered an umbrella rule, an umbrella commandment, okay? And you may say, well, it doesn't say we can't do this, but if we really break it down, we can't do it, because it's already been covered, all right? And for some of you younger ones, you may be thinking, what on earth are you talking about? And that's okay. But some of you older ones, I think you're starting to understand what I'm saying, okay? And the most important part is that we apply that. We apply these commandments and these rules, all right? So, what's the difference right now between the Ten Commandments and where we are today? Now, remember, because when the Israelites received the Ten Commandments, Jesus had not yet walked on the earth, okay? This is going to happen a long, long, long time after, all right? So, because we live in a time where Jesus has already been to the earth, we know that we are what? We are under the new covenant. Jesus brought the new covenant, all right? He established the new covenant by going to the cross, and we live under the new law, which we find in the New Testament, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to break down some of these commandments. We're going to break down all of the commandments, really, but we're going to start with the first two today, all right? We're going to break down some of these commandments, then we're going to flip to the New Testament and make those applications to our lives today. All right? So here we are. Now that we're all talked about rules, we know all about them, we know about the umbrella rules and things like that, let's jump in. All right? We're just going to read a few more verses here in Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, here we have the introduction of the Ten Commandments. All right? And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Now remember, the Israelites have had example after example after example of God's wondrous power and might. Through all the plagues, through all the things that He's done to provide for food and for water for them, they know, they should at this point know, who God is. Okay? Verse 3, the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Continuing to read on in verse 4, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For the Lord your God, excuse me, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children of the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing the steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. All right? So here we are. We're introduced to commandment number one and to commandment number two. Okay? So what are the commandments number one and commandment number two? Commandment number one. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay? So no other gods before me. Let's read the second commandment. Okay? The second commandment, I'm going to wrap up a little bit, and it basically says you shall not have or make 
idols. Okay, so we know that here um, in the Old Testament setting, there were lots of different civilizations who worshipped what? They worshipped idols, all right? Even the Egyptians, they had certain quote-unquote gods who were not real that were just idols that they worshipped. Even they viewed Pharaoh as a god on earth, okay? So commandment number one, you shall have no other gods before me. So we know that God is the one true living God. If you look... Guys, at Jude, chap, Jude 1, which we only know that Jude is one chapter, right? Jude, so really Jude 1, verse 25, it says, To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. So the writer there, to the only God. So we know that God is the one true, only, almighty, holy God. Okay? And therefore, we cannot have any other gods before him, and we shall not make any idols. Okay? And a lot of us are thinking, well, we got that, we understand that. But unfortunately, guys, sometimes we may do this without even realizing it. Okay? Before we go any further, I want to take us to the New Testament. Alright? So remember, commandment number one is what? What's the first commandment? The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me, or you shall have no other gods before God. Second one is, you shall not make idols. All right, so keeping that in our mind, all right, let's go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. It may take you a moment to get there. That's okay. Remember, it's the first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 22, and we'll be starting in verse 34. If you need a moment, hit pause, and when you're ready, hit play. Matthew 22, starting in verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Okay? So here we have in the context of you shall have no other gods before me. And here we see Jesus Jesus is speaking to the crowd, and he says, "What you shall love your Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind." Okay, so how how do we make these connections? How do we make sure that we're doing this? Okay, it means that God must be our number one priority. Okay, we must love God with every single thing that we have, and we must make sure that He is number one in our life, okay? So let's think about this. You may be thinking, well, I've never seen a, a wooden image or a golden image or any type of image around our house that we worship, so I think we're doing pretty good at this. So let's think about this. How often do we let things get in our way of putting God first? Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with sports. There's nothing wrong with video games. There's nothing wrong with hanging out with your friends. There's nothing wrong with a lot of the things that we like to do. There's nothing wrong with hunting or with fishing or with swimming or any of the things that we like to do. But here's the problem, all right, or where it can become a problem. If we start putting these things before God, remember it says, you shall have no other gods before me and you shall not make idols, okay? If we start choosing to do these things instead of loving God, or we start loving these things more than we love God, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when we can create an idol. If we're not careful, we can make something into an idol. So is there anything wrong with sports? Absolutely not. Is there anything wrong with swimming or hunting or fishing or video games? No, there's not. But we have to make sure that we put God in His rightful place. That we put God number one. That we love God with every single thing that we have. With our heart, with our mind, and with our soul. Okay? Because if not, then we are not following these commandments. We are not putting God first. Okay? So we sometimes have to reevaluate. And I want you guys to think about it in the coming days. Am I putting God first? Is God number one in my life? Life. And I want to take you really quick to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're just going to go back a few verses. All right? Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 33. Matthew 6, starting in verse 33. Matthew 6 and verse 33. 
But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now we sang the song, Seek You First, and I told you guys it is one of my favorite songs. It's a beautiful song. Again, it's a pretty simple song, but it's so beautiful and so powerful. Guys, if we're going to make sure that we have no other gods before our God, if we don't put anything in His place, we can't replace Him with anything, and we don't create an idol that we worship, the way we're going to do it is by seeking God first in all things. All right? So when you go to the ball field, yes, I'm a soccer player, football player, baseball player, basketball player, but before I'm that, I'm a child of God. And how can I show that I'm a child of God even when I'm on the field? When I'm in the classroom, when I'm fishing, when I'm hunting, when I'm playing video games, whatever it is in your life, how can I still show that I'm a child of God? How can I still show that I'm a Christian through my actions and through my words and through the things that I'm doing? Because we must seek God first. We must put Him in His rightful place to make sure that we haven't accidentally put something on top. Because if something is getting all of our time, and if something's getting all of our attention, and something's getting all of our love, We've put it in God's place. God needs our time. He needs our attention. He needs our love. And He needs our obedience. And we need to make sure that we're doing those things. So even when you're doing the things that you like to do, make sure that you're still at tying God into those things. How can I still be a child of God in these moments? And more than that, thanking God for allowing Him to do these things. God gives us so many blessings, and we need to recognize that. Okay. Commandment number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number two, you shall not make idols. We must love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, and we must make sure that we are seeking God first in all things. Thank you guys so much for your wonderful attention and for tuning in again. Give us just a moment and we'll have some activities. Hey guys, so we're starting into some special rules that God gave his people in the Old Testament. And we're so thankful that we have the example of the Old Testament so that we can learn what God's people went through and how blessed we are that Jesus came and kind of fulfilled these commandments and gave us some new rules. And it's going to be fun learning these Ten Commandments because some of them are commandments that's like, wait a minute, that doesn't that's not something that we necessarily do today. But... In talking about rules, Peyton mentioned that there are rules everywhere we go, right? There's rules on the road. There's rules in sports. I want to challenge you. Go out and think about rules. Spend the whole week just thinking about rules. Get outside with your family and play soccer. What's the number one rule of soccer? No hands, right? You can only use your feet or bounce it off your head. No hands. What if you broke that rule? If one person chose to broke that, break that rule and everybody else played by the rule, what would be the consequences? How would it be unfair? Yeah, if you can just grab it and run with it, nobody else can get their feet on the ball, can they? How could it harm you? Well, if you reach down to get a ball and somebody else is planning to kick that ball, you could get your hands stepped on or get your, your hands kicked and it would hurt. So rules are important. So just Play some sports, play some board games, talk about what the rules are. Maybe break a few rules on purpose just so you can see the consequences of breaking those rules. Also, when you're out, look at the rules at places like stores or if you go to the library or the park. There's probably some rules posted somewhere and it's important to read those and talk about what would happen if we broke these rules? Why are they important that we have these rules? I hope that you'll take this time to really think about God's Word, but apply it to all the things around us as well. So, as I've told you a long, long time ago, whenever I'm reading a passage, I try to look for key words because that helps me find fun games or fun crafts. And so one of the words that stuck out was the word mountain because remember Moses had to go up on the mountain and he received these commands and the people didn't go and then he came back down the mountain. So I found a fun dice game that you can play called Up and Down the Mountain, okay? So what I've done is I've drawn a mountain and I'm a, I've drawn one for Riley and I'm going to draw myself one. Mountains are pretty easy to draw so the kids can help with this. 
And how many sides are there on a dice? There are six, right? So we're going to count up to six. Six is going to be our mountaintop, and then we're going to count back down. So we're going to count up. One, two, three, four, five, six is on top of the mountain, and then we'll count back down. Five, four, three, two, one. And I have two dice, and I'm going to let Riley go first because that's the nice thing to do, right? So Riley's going to roll her two dice and see, she's got a one, and that's what we're looking for because we got to climb up the mountain. So you get to mark out one. So what's the next number you're going to be looking for, Riley? Two. 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 All right, so Miss Renee's turn. I got a three and a five. I don't get to cross one out. So now it's back to Riley's turn. Oh. A one and a five. Now, if she happened to roll a two and a three at the same time, guess what? She gets to cross out two numbers, two and three. This is a fun game to play. Even when the kids are just now learning their numbers, it, it, it promotes taking turns. What are some of the rules? You got to go up and then you got to go down, right? We don't want to break those rules and you want to share and take turns and be a good player and not be a sore loser, right, Riley? Right. So, yeah. looks like Riley's probably going to beat me, so I'll have to make sure that I'm a good loser, okay? All right, guys. So, we know that God gave us rules and we also know that Jesus gave us some commands in the New Testament. And in fact, if you'll remember from several weeks ago, several lessons ago, we learned in, was it Matthew? Ma yeah, Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 37. If you remember, some people were asking Jesus, what's the greatest command, right? Because they were used to living under that, uh, that old law with 10 commandments. And they're asking, what's the greatest one? And he says, love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love others as you love yourself. So I have this heart because it's all about love, right? We love God, we love others, and God loves us. Now, if you'll notice, the reason I found this craft, this idea, was that they were tying it into the Ten Commandments. And if you look at these two sections, don't they look like the tablets that we think about in our, hand, in our head when we're thinking about how he wrote down the Ten Commands on tablets of stone? That's what that looks like. And so what they did was they actually took the Ten Commandments and they made them in the shape of tablets and they, they divided them. And they said, okay, no other gods before me. Commandment one goes here. And, and you go through the commands. And I thought, what a neat idea, but let's make it bigger because our God is so big, right? And his love for us is so big. So we're going to talk about the things that we've learned today and say, where are these going to go? What was commandment number one? Do you remember? Oh, I bet you do. Number one was no gods before me, right? So I'm going to put number one, no gods before me. Miss Renee does not have the best handwriting, but that's okay. You'll see how I do this. So I'm just going to stick this right here. So that goes in that heart, okay? What was commandment number two? Do you remember that one? Oh, number two is you will make no idols, right? Make no idols. And we're going to put that because is that about loving others or is that about loving God? That's about loving God, isn't it? So we're going to put that right there. Now, I'm going to throw another verse out at you, and I hope that you'll read your Bible and fill up this whole heart, not just with the Ten Commandments, but with things in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Think about John 3.16. I bet you know that verse, don't you? For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, right? That whoever should believe in him should have everlasting life. So John 3.16 God loved us and sent his son. And where's that going to go on our heart? Is it going to go under where God loves us? Yes. And he loves us so much more than we can ever love him, right? So I made that space much, much bigger. Because I bet when you go through the Bible, you're going to find many more verses about God loving us than what we can do to show our love for God and our love for others, right? Because His love is so much bigger. So I hope you'll take this time, make the biggest heart you can, and fill it up with verses and examples of loving God, loving others, and God loving us. So I wanted to do a little building craft too, because not everybody's about drawing or painting or anything. But, so this is a building craft. So if you've got some crafty people with popsicle sticks, 
you can build this. Now I'm using a hot glue gun, so if you wanna use a hot glue gun, you might wanna get mom and dad involved, but if you've got regular glue, you can use that. You just have to be patient, right? And that's something we're always working on. But all you need is just popsicle sticks. Now a lot of my popsicle sticks I broke in half, and Miss Riley helped me. And remember, use wire cutters, and those help you make really good breaks in your sticks because scissors are not a tough enough tool for this job. So it's a fun job if you've got somebody that wants to learn how to work a tool, they can break these sticks in half. And you need to make a heart, we're going to use two full size sticks and then I took three sticks and cut them in half. Okay, so I'm just going to glue it. First I'm going to make an L. See my L right there? And then from each one, I'm going to go straight up. So there's my L, and I'm gonna go straight up on this side and straight up on this side, okay? It almost, it's starting to look like home plate, isn't it? <laughs> and we're gonna put some glue on these and we're gonna come back toward each other. So we're gonna come this way and we're gonna come this way and then we're gonna make a V right in the middle. Oops, I'm throwing my sticks. We're gonna make a V down here and a V down here. And then we're gonna connect those two. Now this first layer is really the hardest one. Once you have this base though, you have a good foundation, it's easy to build up, right? It always starts with a good foundation. And I added several sticks, and now I've made a really thick box heart. Now you can take this and you can trace it with cardboard and make a base for it so that it can actually hold stuff. Hmm, what should we put in our heart? You could put maybe your prayer list in there. You might could put verses about love in there and give it away to somebody. I saw them paint it online and it looked so pretty. They painted it and they added buttons and different things. They glued pretty things on it and made a beautiful box that you can give away to somebody to show them God's love, right? So I hope that you'll take the time to build and create and show God's love to everybody around you. Okay guys, so we're going to do an art project and we're going to use some of the techniques that we've used before, but we're actually going to make a heart stencil. Now I have got, this is contact paper or shelf paper. Your mom might have some of this in the kitchen where she lays it in the shelves to keep messes from getting onto the cabinets. So this makes a great stencil because it's sticky. It's got paper on the back and you peel it off and it's sticky, but it's not so sticky that you can't peel it back up. So it makes an awesome stencil an awesome stencil for making craft projects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a heart because we're talking about loving God, right? Love him more than anything else. So I'm just gonna make, I folded my contact paper in half and I'm just making a simple heart, okay? So there's our heart. Now there's paper on the back and you peel that off. So Riley, we're gonna peel this off for you. We're gonna peel this off for Riley and she's gonna stick this on a piece of black paper all right, so you just stick that anywhere on the paper that you want. And she's going to use chalk, and I've made it wet because remember we learned how that made it a whole lot easier. Now you do whatever you want. You can make starbursts of different colors. You can do all one color. You can make multiple colors. But And you can scribble. It doesn't have to be pretty. You can get it on the actual heart itself. No big deal. And guess what? It's a two for one because while she's got a heart, now we've got the stencil of a heart so we can make a totally different craft with this. So while she's scribbling on that, I'm going to peel this one off and we're going to make a second art project. So it's two for one. So Riley's got some pretty colors going on her black paper. And we're going to put this stencil down right here. So are you happy? We're yes. going to let that dry and we're going to move on to this one. Now this one's a different technique. We haven't done this one yet. Now if you wanted to, you could take markers and you could just scribble on the inside or you could take paint. We're going to do something special with this okay. one, okay? We're going to take paint. Oh, And I'm going to show you, this was a neat trick that I saw online. Now this might get a little messy. <laughs> You might not want to do this, or mom and dad might not want you to do this, but we're going to do just an abstract heart, okay? Sure. So I'm going to give you pink, 
I'm going to take some blue. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put some drops up at the top. We want them around the top of the heart, okay? And it can be big splotches. It doesn't have to be little bitty. I think I can get some paint out of here. Just on the top? Yes, we're just going to. And you want to pretty much cover up the whole top. And, of course, I need to let paint oh, get like down here. Much? Like just big splotches. Oh, big splotches. And you can mix colors. Like you can put... Oh, that we'll put just... green right there and green over here. <laughs> that one has congealed a little bit. Yes. We're going to put a little bit of orange right there. And we're going to put a little bit of orange. I think I've got, I think my paint, some of my paint might be a little bit out. There we go. All right. And we're going to put a little bit of this light blue over here, yes. maybe. Put some just in yes. different places. Okay. Now. This is the tool we're going to use. This is an old gift card that's been used. Normally, you just throw these away. We're going to take it and just do a gentle... I'm going to do one, and then I'll let you do the other side, okay? We're just going to take a gentle hand. And I'm just going to scrape it down the heart. And if you need to do add a little more paint somewhere, you can just kind of do what you need to do. All right? And then we're going to... I'm going to find a, a scrap piece of paper. I think I can do this. Can I use this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to wipe off the excess. And then, of course, you can use that to make your planets from last time. Remember us doing planets? I'm going to let you do the other side. She's got a lot of pretty pinks and greens on that side. And just gently. It's like, almost like icing a cake. And there's no way to mess this up. You just do the best you can. And whatever excess you have, you can wipe it off in the trash can. And then, of course, because you got paint, you got to let it dry. But let me show you what it looks like when we're done. Here's one that I did at the house this morning, and I set it out in the sun to dry, okay, with that same technique. So we're just going to peel up the contact paper, because luckily, contact paper peels very nicely, better than stickers. And when we're all done... We've got this nice, pretty little abstract heart. If you want to pull your, um, let's wait on this oh, one since that oh, one's dripping. Okay. If you want to do that one, uh, Riley's going to pull hers off, and I'm going to show you a different technique that I did earlier. This was just a Sharpie, and I just did tons of little dots. It works good if you just need to get out some energy, and you just want to do dots as fast as you can. And see, it might, makes a cute little confetti heart. How does yours look, Riley? It is pretty. So get in the kitchen, get, get outside if you need to make a mess outside, and just enjoy some of these techniques to make a lovely heart that you can send out love to people. Because remember, I hope you're doing your messages of love because that's what we're trying to do is send people love. Hey guys, so we had taken a long break from doing any sign language songs because we've been learning about the plagues and all these things that took up a little more time. So we're going to go back and we're going to do Jesus Loves Me. It's one of our first songs that we learn as children because it's the most important fact that we learn about in the Bible, right? Is that Jesus loves us and he gave his life for us. So we're going to do Jesus Loves Me. Now most of these signs you already know from other songs that we have done. Do you remember the sign for Jesus? Jesus, remember, his hands were pierced with nails, right? So Jesus loves. Loves is just like you're giving yourself a hug, right? Jesus loves me. Okay? Super easy, right? Jesus loves me. This I know. Now, if you think it's one finger, I think, but we know, right? So it's four fingers because we know. So Jesus loves me, this I know. Okay, now for the Bible tells me so. So Bible, this is a neat sign. It's Jesus' book. The Bible is Jesus' book, okay? So for the Bible tells, tells is, you're telling somebody something, right? Tells me so, uh-huh. So let's start from the beginning. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, okay? Now, little ones, we're thinking about little children. Now, some of you are little children, but think of somebody even littler than you. And what do we do? We pat them on the head, right? Little ones to him belong. It's like we're linking our fingers. It's you're thumbing your pointer finger and you're linking them, Okay. So we belong to him, right? Little ones to him belong. They 
are weak, all right? Think of you standing on the ground and your knees just buckle out from under you because you're weak. They are weak, but he is strong, okay? Ooh, can we do all of that together? Let's see. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him be long. They are weak, but he is strong. Okay, now we're ready for yes, Jesus loves me, right? Yes, we're nodding our head yes, right? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible, remember that's Jesus' book, the Bible tells me so. Do you think we can put all that together? That's a lot of stuff, but I bet you guys can do it. We can do it. <laughs> all right, guys, so you guys have just learned the signs to one of our favorite songs. It's a song that we lead off with every single time. Now, if you mess up, that's totally fine. We probably will mess up at one point. But we'll just plan on singing it through twice with the signs, okay? Cool. Usually we sing it first without the signs, but I think we know this song well enough that we're just going to jump into the signs, okay? All right, here we go. Are you ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, Riley, how to do that? <laughs> I really messed up there, and I it's okay. It's all right. We <laughs> all we all mess up. All Remember, mess up. messing up is part of the learning process, right? When when you're learning, it's you're gonna lot. make mistakes, all right? And you can make mistakes. It's totally fine. The the most important part is that you're trying, all right? Learning is gonna equal mistakes, all right? So we're gonna do it again. And so what we're gonna do, all right? Some of the words. What what was tripping you up, Riley? Are there anything I don't know. in particular? I just, uh... I think the no. ones that was throwing me off is remember this is I know oh, I kept one I kept wanting to do one remember one is I think right, right. and four is I know yeah. okay yeah. and also just to confirm uh, because me and I are the same because it's like Jesus loves me this I so you're just pointing to yourself and it means me and I so I'm not doing anything different for I versus me they're the same sign. So it gets a little tricky, but it's okay. If you can't, still aren't getting it, the nice part about this video is what? You can just rewind yes. it and watch it over and over again until you get it, okay? And don't worry, you guys know it took me like six months to get the Apostle song down. So if it takes you a little while to get the signs for Jesus Loves Me, no worries. You guys know we're going to sing it again. We'll sing it at the beginning of the next class, and we'll sign it then too, okay? We're we ready to try it again? Yep. All right, here we go. Let's sing it and sign it together. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good, Good job. job. And if you have any questions, just watch Mr. Renee because Riley and I think we're all over the place. Well, I we're getting, a little bit too. It's so all right. yeah, we're learning together. Much. We're learning together. That's the most important part, and we'll continue to learn this, all right? So now you guys know how to sing Jesus Loves Me the regular way, without the me, in Spanish, and with sign language. And it's so important for us to be able to communicate and recognize that not everyone's like us. Everyone has different communication needs, and we all communicate differently, okay? And part of evangelizing is reaching out to everyone. So we're going to continue to learn different ways to reach people, okay? Because Jesus wants us to reach out to everyone. Again, guys, making mistakes is just part of the learning process, right? No one's perfect. The only person that was ever perfect on this earth is Jesus, right? We're trying to be like him every single day, but we know that we're going to make mistakes when we're learning, and that's okay. Don't let your mistakes hold you back, right? Learn from your mistakes and keep pushing and keep trying to be more and more like Christ, okay? Before we go any further, let's end this class in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you blessed us with. Father, thank you so much for this Bible class and this opportunity to learn more about you. Father, we pray that we take the things that we learned today and we apply them to our life. 
Father, we pray that we take opportunities this week to learn more about you, to, to read the Bible, to pray, to sing. And Father, to make sure that we're putting you number one in our lives. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you so much for Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time.